already. You are live. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. That means we have to be nice. We are always nice. <laughs> we have to be nice to each other. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I should move this little curtain back here. Okay. If possible. <laughs> now you can see William's ass. Hey. <laughs> Hey, anybody here? Come on, guys. Write something in the chat so we know we are live. If nobody's going to write anything, we're going to be talking to ourselves. Like normal. Like normal. <laughs> Off-grid couple. Off-grid couple. Talking, well, talking to a fish. Well, if we're going to be talking to each other, then why are we going live? We can do that without live. No, it's a new, it's a new process. <laughs> I have recordings, and I have something then recorded exactly as I said it. So you can, when you ah, say prove it. Prove it. Here yeah, it is right yeah, here. Here it is right here. Hey, guys. So I see. Good morning. We see you. Good morning. Code game. Oh, wait a minute. River Rebel 7 Freefold. Hey, Brother Bill. Oh, You're no. Hello. Who's, hello, uh, Brother Who. <laughs> <laughs> Rebel. River Rebels. Bobby Presley. What's up, guys? Hope you're all enjoying your new home. Welcome. Million restaurant tips. I love your channel. Thank you so much. Charles is here. Joe, Charles, GC, River, Mike, every hello from Wakanda too. So hello, Mike. <laughs> How about Wakanda one? <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. I see there are 47 people watching. Uh, today, guys, is a new uh, refreshing statement here. <laughs> the new refreshing statement is today everybody can write in the chat. If you even don't have a Google account and you're not logged in on YouTube, there is this live chat that you can write in and we're going to see your comments. So we expect more um, input today. More input? Well, we want to talk to you guys. Not that we didn't have input before, but uh, when I learned that you had to sign in and do all these things, I don't think a lot of people were very comfortable with that. So anyone can ask questions. Anybody. And Yes. Hello, Rob. Rob is our patron. Hello, Rob. I have your question here. <laughs> waiting. On my phone waiting. We're going to start with those. And for, every, second. for everyone out there, it is nine o'clock in the morning here. Because in Thailand. In Thailand, Phuket, Thailand. We are like, I always tell my family and friends, if you're sleeping, we're awake. And if we're awake, you're sleeping. So we're 12 hours off. And what we have to say? get up. Yes. And get prepared, shave, brush our teeth, flop around, eat <laughs> eat cereal, drink coffee. <laughs> so, and I have to say, Saudi ka. Saudi ka. So Saudi ka is hello, in Thailand. Thailand. So no, you Saudi ka. Saudi ka. <laughs> Saudi ka. Saudi ka is for women to say hello, and Saudi ka is cup. for men. Yep. Yes. So. Don't Mess this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've got it straight. Uh where is who watching us from? Usually come on guys, write us something. I see New Zealand is here, Derek. Uh Trinidad will not uh Rob is in Texan. Um Florida GM. You're not typically morning people. I am William is not. William is a night owl. Nordic Khan, hello. Uh Virginia CLC. Oh yeah, Rob. Sorry, I got out of step here. River Rebels again, Mike. Mike, you never River sleep. Rebel. That's so funny. Montreal, Peter. Okay, uh, so should, shall we wait for one minute? Like before, yeah, we start? yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we have 61 people. We shouldn't wait anything, really. A couple minutes. Just gonna say, uh, <laughs> okay. okay, uh, hello, brother Mike. Number yes. one, yes, oh, oh. he's correct. We never sleep because we're always on the line with him day and night anywhere in the world. Rob, congratulations on your boat. Saw your video. I made a comment or two about it. Uh, I, I am sure that you are loving it. Um, and keep those questions coming into Patreon because I love answering questions when I don't actually have to like do the work. It's uh wait a minute. Yeah. That's a screen. And I know so our I, screen is dirty, William. It's like I had there a, is a dirt here. I had a dot in the middle of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> um, so while we're waiting for a couple of moments, we are now six months in Thailand. Um, and in summary, getting used to the boat 
has been much easier for me than I ever imagined. Getting used to all the different things here has been a little less than interesting. Um, there's one-way roads, but scooters don't have to listen to that. So you can be going in the middle of the night down the road one direction, and you can have headlights coming right in front of you, scares the shit out of you, and it's a scooter. But those are the good guys because they have lights. There's a lot of scooters at nighttime going the wrong direction without lights. So how people don't get smeared here is, is beyond me. The driving is amazing, and people really look out for each other. But adjustment here, uh, food, amazing. Um, I'm sitting here bouncing on the table. And getting parts is uh, quite a challenge. If you see a piece of wire, you better buy it when you see it because you can go back the next day and say, oh, sorry, we're out. Okay, uh, when's your next shipment of wire? Uh, four or five months. And so... Uh, but you, then on the other hand, the parts that are available for this boat that are not because like on Don Hunters, there were all used parts so we couldn't ever find anything. But this boat is newer, so it's not as challenging if they are available. Some of them are available or in the news, in the stores, marine stores, right? Yes, yes, because uh, this boat being production, uh, thousands of these built, but then they've utilized newer items, the so pumps, switches, things like that, readily available. Um, so it has been an adjustment for us, um, and we have been living actually, I guess, we've been between two places. We've been in Malaysia, Langkawi, which is total, total jungle, monkeys all over the roads. Um, you can't go out with a plastic bag in your hand or you could be wrestling with a monkey. <laughs> um, and then here in Thailand. So uh, the waters are beautiful. The uh, everything, I can't say anything about it. So anything bad at all about it. <laughs> So I guess 76 people, we can start out with. Uh... Yeah, but let's say hello to everybody who said hello, right? Hello, Bobby from Tennessee, GM, Tony. Hello, Stephen. Greetings from SoCal. Um, Southern California. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> <Hello>, you. <Steven. laughs> SoCal. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. I'm like, I wonder what that is. Uh, Rob is saying, thank you for the comment. We had to Fleming on the 19th code game. Both ownership is constant learning process. Exactly. Uh, Desire one, two, three, vacation. Hello, everyone. Hello, Joe. Hello, Hakuna Matata. Hello from Brazil. Wow, that's so cool. Hello, Timothy. Hello from Prescott, Arizona. George, Brazil, GM. How many, how many boats have you had? by the way as we are saying hello oh this would probably be the 15th one five i'm a boat i'm a boat addict and when i was younger i didn't like boats very much uh and then i loved the challenge of repairing them <laughs> <laughs> and then moved on to them and i can't i don't think i could ever live back on land again um Surf and Turf, hello from Mountains of North Carolina. Charles already here with a question. Do you keep certain spare parts on hand? We're going to write that down. Uh, we're going to come back to this. Sailing someday, hello from Nigeria. That is so cool. Hello. Uh, let me know where in Nigeria. Hello from Arizona, Greg. Sean, hello from Australia. Hello from New York. Where are you headed up to Thailand? Going to be here for a while, probably. We're going to get back to this a little. <laughs> Hey, what's your policy for bringing women on the boat and trying not to let your wife and or kids find out? Ooh, nice question. Nice question, Brian. Is your wife watching or not? <laughs> that's a that's a first hint. <laughs> <laughs> Sailing someday. I'm in Port Harcourt. Cool. Oh, Port Harcourt. Well, welcome Port Harcourt, and welcome everyone from around the globe. What's the best location of pickups? Pickups of what? Oh, or I girls? can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking about a Ford Raptor, or are we talking about a two-legged uh, Raptor? Is your wife okay with you having women on the boat or not? Oh my gosh! They see why this time we are a lot. Usually, only subscribers can write comments on our channel. Yeah, so now we're gonna get good questions. Uh, now we're gonna get good questions. Well, it looks like we have an icicle hanging between our head. I see 82 people watching and only 55 likes on this video. Come on, guys. Help this channel. Put a like on the videos you're watching and we can go back. And maybe this. YouTube will start um, telling people when we have videos coming out. Maybe they'll notify. I saw another question there about 
visa. Visa? Yeah, you jumped over mm. it. See right there. How long is a visa stay there? Yeah. By so, Joe. Okay. Should I answer that now or? Yeah, you can. Right. So <clears throat> Thailand's very interesting. Uh, if you're from the States, you get a three month visa on entry. You just come in and they look at you and they stamp your passport. You're good for 90 days. Uh, they just uh, opened up 90 days for several other countries, uh, being Russia and China. And uh, also there's, I think, um, 80 countries that get 90 day visa entry. You can also then apply for an elite visa or a retirement visa, which gives you five years here without having to leave and stamp and come back and forth. Uh, and then that can be extended for 10. So the country is kind of known as the Switzerland of Asia. They're bringing uh, hundreds of thousands of people here that are expats from around the globe. And I have encountered more English speaking people from around the world here than I have in Bahamas and other places. Um, so the uh, visa program is to have people come here and bring their talent, bring their wives, uh, or come find a wife. There's I see a lot of comments here about Thai girls and Thai wives. If this video is gonna get in during this live 150 likes, uh, we're gonna cover the Thai wife situation. Here. Yeah, yeah. We, All I can so do is we, that we know a lot. So we, if if this 150 likes here, we'll talk about this. Yeah, today. yeah. We will. Uh, because there are even Thai wife visas. Yes. Yeah, so. And I'll just give you a hint. Yeah, so. so, all right. So put those likes, share the video, tell everybody, put the like. And if there are 150, we'll talk about this today. So we first have to write this question down and then we're going to yeah. start with the patron questions. Yeah. What place have you found to be unsafe? Have you sailed around the Horn of Africa or planted? All right. So I'll just maybe a screen a screenshot. Yeah, screenshot well, we the, uh, yeah. We're going to start with Patreon questions first. And then we're going to. And then we'll revert back over yep. these questions. Yep. So. So first question was from, um, there's just two. Um, just a second. John, has your first impression of your new boat changed much and how? An easy one. Kind of. You're going to ask me? Or yeah, I'm ask asking you. you. First? No. Hmm. You the, go ahead. the transition has been uh, very surprising. It, it's uh, to answer that question direct. I was always into steel metal bolts safety from the oil rig industry and from working on a farm or welding or everything that I've done over the years. Steel always had a certain amount of security. Well, this is now fiberglass, but in doing research, the designs of a catamaran today uh, are designed to cross oceans. They are designed for uh, if a keel hits a stone or something, it's going to break away and it's not going to flood the cabin. You are above the water line in 90% of the boat. You're not under like a submarine. Um, growing up in northern Wisconsin in a basement, the only sunshine we saw in the winter is when we removed the, so the snow. So having light bright all around, uh, having a very st stable vessel because it's 50 foot long, but it's 28 foot wide. So it really handles the waves much better than the model hull. The model hull in certain waves, we were rocking all over the place in two foot seas. We have been in two storms, very strong storms in this. We dragged the anchor and almost hit the islands. And uh, so the transition first and most important to me was safety. Boat design where you take it, I can spend hours on that, but it was, are we going to be on a safe vessel? And that's the whole reason why we decided to, to go to this vessel because its safety standards are of 2018 and forward. And we were on a vessel that was designed for safety standards 35 years ago. So compare it to the two boats side by side. Yes, one's metal. It could hit rocks and lay there. This one, if it hits the rocks, it might get water on one side or the other. But safety-wise, this is a much safer vessel. Our friend who has now the Dawn Hunter just hit a water spout, right? Yeah, he the was actually he was just yeah. in a tornado. Oh, the yeah, tornado, yeah. Yeah, 20 degree and all those things are flying around. And that's when you kind of feel good in steel, <laughs> I guess. But the steel is under the water line. So if you have a hole, you're going to sink. In this boat, if you do have a hole, one pontoon or the other will sink. But the boat's not going to go down. So there is a positive effect. You can always come back and get your things off of it. In theory. In theory. Hopefully we will not check this. Yeah, J James, what's his name? 
Yeah, Zingaro. Zingaro. Yeah, he's a great testimonial. His boat split in two pieces, and he was able to get it back. And so there, there is a safety factor there. Uh, as far as live aboard, this is unbeatable. I mean, you walk from the back deck to the galley to the living area all without going down steps. The other boat, we were going down 50 steps an hour. So transition, th this is amazing. I, I would say that unless someone wanted to go expedition around the globe, this is the type of boat. And the other last item, people say, well, it's very expensive to go into a marina. Well, in Thailand, there's hundreds and hundreds of catamarans. So it's no more expensive than a catamaran as it is in a monohull. But you don't go into marinas. You live on anchor. You drop the hook. It doesn't care where you put the hook. So transition, I have a lot of questions on this. That's why I spent more time. Yeah, is, this, this video is kind of... Uh... We, we actually if you guys more interested in that that was our past life we covered a lot like monohull versus tamaran and why we switched and things like that so uh, jim is asking how did you get such a beautiful and intelligent wife oh you know what i'm gonna write a book about that <laughs> well <laughs> well gt is saying even an alley cat gets lucky oh. once in a while Meow. <laughs> Get some mouse. <laughs> You're very far from Ali Cat. Thank you very much. Well, let's see. <laughs> um, you know, we have had, I've, I've been around the world. I've got millions of miles. I used to be a field engineer installing equipment globally. And yes, I was very fortunate to meet my wife, Yana, um, and actually boating. She showed me a joke the other day, and the guy is like, well, the woman's like, tell me something about yourself. And the guy is like, well, I love sailing. And the next slide was that the chair was empty and the guy is gone. Yeah, and William is like, what's the joke? I said, well, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> like most, <laughs> like a lot of people we meet out here, where's your wife? Uh, she's gone. She didn't like sailing. She's seasick. Yeah. I was fortunate when I said I'm going sailing as soon as I can retire, before I get too old, uh, Yana's chair moved closer and it's never left. So, yep. you know, we've been amazingly fortunate to have each other uh, live for 30 days in a box with someone, which is being at anchor. And you've got to love each other. Yeah. And I only say spend some time with your wife. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> that's our that's our saying. Yeah. I, I always <clears throat> say to him, spend some time with your wife. <laughs> uh, it's a good question. Do you get nervous being in other countries? That's a great question. I, I do, because we actually just laughed about that the other day. We were walking in the street and when we first came there and walking on the very same street, we thought it was very seedy and kind of dangerous yeah and we were, yeah and we we're walking the other, like the other day and i'm like wow this is such a touristy lit up street nothing is wrong with it but we were so not not scared but we were like concerned i'm like where's my uh i don't know belongings i should hide them everything like somebody can take my money so yeah sometimes when you go to different countries because the surroundings are so different and you're not familiar some things look a little more scary than they are in reality. But that is my downfall. A lot of times I actually think quite the opposite. I think that some things are not dangerous at all and sometimes they are. So yeah, it, yeah, it, uh, it's, it's like a skill that you develop over time. And William has it because he, he's, he traveled so much more than me and um, to judge well your surroundings. It's very important. You know, going from <clears throat> from Saudi Arabia to Nigeria, Angola, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, you know, places, Sudan, I, I, I always had a certain sense for where I should and shouldn't be. And that's, I guess, why I'm still here today. But um, we first got in the Bahamas and we were at anchor with no one around, pitch black. And we looked at each other on the other boat and we're like, there's no, we can't have guns here. There's no protection. What do we do if someone comes on? We were like two scared rabbits trying to figure out how to protect ourselves. I now get a lot of questions about security on the boats. We're here in Thailand. We go out on the anchor and fishing boats go by and wave at you. People are, are bowing to you. You can always have someone in an unsafe location, 
but overall i have never been in a location that i didn't feel i had to have my weapons because i had to give my weapons up uh, which was very hard it's almost as hard as my jeep so we still have security on the boat um i have my own personal security that i was I, i'm trained <laughs> um i'm not gonna you know like take down 25 little guys that have knives and machetes but the the reality is is that this is <laughs> <laughs> yana said just throw me at them and and just say it's okay and then they'll leave the boat and i'm like well that's not happening that either. was not what i said <laughs> <laughs> so so <clears throat> safety in boating you read piracy reports we talk to a lot of boaters and uh this location is so full of boats and people and the people are genuinely nice um living in miami miami beach you could go in places at miami at nighttime that you better have your ar with you yeah. because everybody else has ars yeah so here you say ar and it's a video game so anyway we'll Hopefully. keep going here if you just joined right because some people i see joined us hello guys if you have just joined i see 110 people when we started was 60. hello oh, hello, hello everybody cheers 110 uh, we're drinking coffee we're drinking uh, yeah, water and coffee pre super bowl for you you can have a shot if you want what we're doing right now i see do you uh answer patron questions b kilby uh kilby yes uh yes we are we have actually just one left uh from the people who sent us prior but if you're a patron by no means send it here and we'll answer that in priority but uh, after we do that we're going to answer all your questions from the chat so everybody today can you got a bunch of them yes there. everybody today all can. i have to do is answer them yana has to record them and prepare them so her job everybody today can today. write in the chat you have no excuse you don't have to be logged in you don't have to have youtube account this is a live chat write down your question and we will answer it today and if we hit 150 we're going to talk about i'm going to tell you about thai wife thai girl and how william brings them on the boat <laughs> <laughs> actually we okay yes later. <laughs> so put that like if you want to hear uh stories about thai girls <laughs> if you don't don't put the like we have a couple dead ones down below <laughs> <laughs> well you're gonna get yeah deported. boarded <laughs> okay so the last question from the patron that no, i have i gave you one too yes so well, batteries batteries so go, that's from rob go to the yeah. other one first because the battery's a long one this was this is it okay this, this is the last one the one i was happy that's with. not from patron <laughs> i'd like to know more about your 48 volt battery bank i'd like to know the battery brand and capacity the products used for conversion inversion solar wind integration basically for everything and for management and data <laughs> do you have separate batteries for engine gen set and thrusters finally anything else i haven't thought of as i agree with the importance of battery installation design and maintenance so leave that one there so i can read them in separations here <clears throat> rob i knew you're going to do this to me uh i will send you all the data sheets and all the data sheets and breakdown uh, by patron. But to answer the question is that I went with the uh, it's a LF 304 battery. That's a 304 amp hour battery, 3.2 volts. And by putting 32 of those together, we end up with a 48 volt bank cell, which is around 56 volts, 54 volts, plus or minus. Um, that gives us a total. I've got to look at this here. 31.3 kilowatt hours of power and that's the 48 the 48 then i came up with a design scheme that i've been testing it's been working quite well um the 48 charges the 12 volt limbs that were already on the boat and then the 12 volt lithium is what runs everything on the boat so i didn't even have to change a pump a bilge a motor or anything so we have a full 48 volt feeding the 12 volt so anyone out there can put a 48 volt system on their boat on the cabin, car, off-grid home, motor home, and then connect it to your 12-volt system. And my system thinks that the 48-volt is actually a solar panel with a very high output current. It's up to 200 amps. Um, so I'll send you the details on that. Anyone that wants to know details, uh, it's, quite in, in, it's quite intricate. Um, for safety, we have a charge relay, 200-amp charge relay, and a 200-amp discharge relay with a 500 amp surge so if anything 
pulls too much current from the battery or each battery pulls too much current to charge, they automatically shut down, of which it did to me once because uh, um, ah, the hatch was open and I got some rain on one of the batteries and the temperature probe went crazy and the whole bank shut down. I had forgotten to close the hatch and I did not have the enclosure yet there. So uh, summary is the battery bank, uh, I can go into detail, separate batteries for each engine, which are still the AGMs, a battery for the wind generators, because you cannot charge lithium with a wind generator without a lot of complication, and then a separate battery for the generator, because the generator still runs from time to time if we have had bad weather, clouds, etc. And uh as you were rounding up, there's uh, some questions about air conditioning, and then you can kind of, because there were a lot of comments also on air conditioning right. on the other video. Um, do you batteries run your air conditioning all night while at anchor? Uh, and then does 48 run air conditioning from uh, B Kilby? Okay. So what happens now is the 48 volt and the 12 volt and the dinghy, which is another eight kilowatt of 48 volt, goes into an inverter. Two, two inverters. So we have 220 on the boat. And then the air conditioners uh, run off of 220. We can run the whole boat for almost four days based on the current load uh, without sun. A week with sun, all the air conditioners at 220. We do run the air conditioner in the uh, master salon from about 10 o'clock at night till around seven in the morning when we're in locations uh, that are full of bugs, hot, no wind, because Which even screens, here. <laughs> screens don't even stop the bugs. These little guys are like champions. Yeah. So to answer your question, we can run the air. Uh, you have enough breeze out at anchor on a catamaran and above the water line where you don't need the air inside the main salon area. Uh, I'm a reservist, which means my gas tank is full. My batteries are full. I don't like running things like air conditioning and have my batteries at 20%. And then for five days, we don't have any sun and now it affects our cooking. Yeah, that happens to us. That happened to us once on this boat because we were not prepared yet. We didn't uh, change our battery bank yet. And uh, we went at anchor on this boat uh, on the state that we received it. And there, the battery bank is was not sufficient enough to run air conditioner without sun powering that. So basically we woke up with everything dead other than the starter battery, right? Yeah, that, battery. that's a very, whether you have an off-grid cabin or whether you have a boat or whatever, lithium goes down to a level and then it just shuts off. It, it, you know, it isn't giving you warnings. The beepers aren't going unless you program it that way. So you, you have to make sure that you design your lithium battery bank properly, that you keep the standard batteries for starting engines. And then you can always turn a switch on, switch the batteries from bank to bank. So uh, I, I can spend a year on lithium. And uh, so shoot me those questions. We won't bore everybody out here that is non-lithium. So great question. Uh, and uh, also, Mikhail be saying that he's uh, sub of 50 in the BBI. And oh, he's cool. asking how many cabins, how many cabins, what, this run the air or what? Uh, well, probably the Saba. This is a the Saba that we have is a four cabin boat and then a complete additional cabin for captain and crew, which has a little, little wet, wet head shower, uh, and a, and a bed that you access either through the cabin or access through the port. Um, each cabin has a separate air conditioner and has a separate air conditioned pump. So we do not run the air ever on the port side. <laughs> no more side. We we never run the, the air conditioner on the uh, guest cabins, I call it. And up here in the salon, there's two air conditioners. Because we have no guests. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then we have spare parts because with a catamaran with four cabins, you've got four pumps, four heads, four sinks, four of everything. So if something does break, we can rob from the other half of the boat and get on the half that we live. Um, and so let's see. So I hope I answered that question. Uh, welcome, Saba. Uh, they are, you have to check these boats out. They are designed, and the 47 are designed. They cross oceans. They take delivery in France, and people sail it to their destination, Australia, Fiji, wherever. They, they are ocean-going 
catamaran vessels. And I can attest to that. Well, we are on the topic. Mike, your brother is asking, if you go many days without sun to charge via solar, do the wind turbines keep things charged for it? The, the wind turbines are 400 watts each. So a pair of them gives us 800 watts. And the 800 watts uh, will keep our main systems operational, which means they keep the batteries topped or enough power into them. And we can cook because we removed all the gas from the boat. I don't like propane tubing all over the boat, nor does Yana. So we have a, a microwave air fryer that we put inside of the oven and we have a flat top uh, induction cooktop. And so uh, wind generators are enough to keep that going. Uh, the other issue is that um, we always have the generator. So we can cut the generator on. It puts 200 amps into the batteries and in 30 minutes, the batteries are fully charged. If these were AGM house bank, we'd have to run it for at least three hours. So And uh, BK will be saying wind turbine is too noisy. Actually, the ones we have, we don't hear them at all. No, that, this is this is a, uh, how do I want to say it? This is a wives' tale. Um, everyone's like, oh, you have wind turbines. They're too noisy. They're too, these D400s, you do not know they are there. Yeah, you don't hear them at all. I have three inch poles right on top of our bedroom. And we sleep at night with 30 knot winds and they're spinning. The difference is, is that these turbines have a regenerative and a braking system. So they only charge what's required. So they actually are slow. They don't speed like a, pro, a pro, propeller on an airplane. So it's the type of turbine you have. You have noise from the wind going through the wind vanes, which is by rotational speed. And then you have vibration of those vanes that transmits down to the cabin. I'm laughing because I see it's 135 likes. I should have put more than 150. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, guys, if we hit 150, we're going to talk about Thai girls today and Thai wives. So so in summary on wind turbines, uh, whether they're on off-grid cabins, whether they're on boats, look and research the correct turbine. There's a whole lot of copycats out there. The D400 is out of the UK. They have been building these things, I think, since the 50s. It jumped, it jumped right to 143. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot topic. Yeah. So, so unless you've had this turbine, I have two of them. We have two of them on our boat, one over each cabin. He's saying he's sound and vibration engineer. Great, great. Then you come on here and... And listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, our, our guys in the marina were all, all upset. They said, you went and put wind on there. Uh, it, it is a D400 built in the UK. It is freaking heavy. Yeah, it's massive. Um, <clears throat> but because of the weight and the type of the blades designed and, and the regenerative braking, each rotation, then the speed is one third of anything that I've seen out there. It's like, you know, the big ones that are in the, in the mountains, you're going to hear them going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh because of the size. But make a recording we can, yeah we can, we can do that uh I'll, I'll do that and i'll post this on patreon yeah, for yeah. You. yeah no problem. perfect yeah okay so looks like uh 149 oh my gosh one more <laughs> like guys and we're gonna talk about thai wife but we're gonna say the the thai wife stuff until yes. after these questions yes so let's uh you know somebody says i see you know oh oh naughty can't our inverter starts beeping when the lithium gets down to about 15 20 percent good lie good little warning system if not watching you should tell the story about the guy who whose wife said to run air conditioner to, to the um with the same batteries that we have yes and how they went at anchor they installed the new batteries Okay, blame. he doesn't remember this story. I'll <laughs> tell you guys the story. So somebody in in Phuket also installed the same batteries. You instead of reading, maybe you'll remember mm -hmm. the story. <laughs> <laughs> they went at anchor and they installed this new, brand new system, very expensive. And the wife of the guy said, "I want air conditioner running," and he said, "Okay, no problem, honey." So they were starting to run air conditioner on their batteries, and then there was how we call that system that allows not to drain to over 30 percent okay uh -huh. ding, uh -huh. ding, ding, ding 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 okay you continue because right. you know better so the the man had 248 volt banks twice of what we have 
they ran the air conditioning on the boat. Everything was phenomenal and great. And the alarm went off and the system shut down. Well, there's something on Victron. It's kind of known as the God mode. It's, it's a special mode that you can override your safety relays. The God mode. <laughs> so that's what the engineers call it because it's like in control of everything. Well, you only use that for testing. But uh, he went there and he turned, turned God on. <laughs> And when he did that, the air conditioners started running. And the air conditioners ran fine all through the night. And they cheered. And they cheered. <laughs> and the wife did. Wife was happy. <laughs> and the next day, the batteries were dead. Fry finished dead. Well, he opened the battery compartment up, and the relays and the temperature controls had shut down everything, but he melted both battery banks, around 60,000 U.S. of batteries, for one night of air conditioning. And he came back to the installing company and said you know take a look at my boat and the guy's looking and they said your batteries are melted he said well they've got to be covered under warranty and they said the warranty was your alarm and then you voided the warranty the minute you pushed the button well so there's a i remember the story but the uh so if the batteries go down for any reason under an alarm mode you have to leave them alone and find out why you can't just go in there and say i still want to run my hair um very, very hard lesson to be learned, uh, which is why I have a double bank. If one bank does have an issue and we shut it down, we can still run off of the other bank. And if that even goes dead, then we can run off the generator. Ray saying, put a stationary bank for the AC. I think a bike. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, no. know, you know, Ray, Ray, I am rewiring because what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize a couple of the systems for the 48 alone. And then I have to route one set of panels into the 48. Because what I've realized is that when it's super sunny days, our 12 volt system's already charged by 10 in the morning and we're wasting all that energy. So after that bank gets charged, I want to really to switch over and then charge the big bank, which uh, I saw a question about solar panels. I'm going to jump into that. Right. Yes, we have, we have bifacial panels. Uh, it's why they're shiny on the bottom. Uh, we didn't mount them upside down. And those uh, bifacials, there's seven of them, 415 watts each. They charge these batteries every day before 11. Uh, but I would, and I am looking for additional panels to mount on the boat because it's so nice to have free energy. And I, okay, it's not free. We're going to cover that also. But it's nice not to have to get up and run a generator at a quiet anchorage you don't have the noise, the vibration. You're not using fuel. Uh, and that's another question about diesel fuel versus solar. Um, we're at a place where you don't get fuel in many, in, in many opportunities. You want fuel, you take your dinghy and you take four fuel tanks, two and a half to five liters or five gallons, and you go and you fill it up and you come back. There aren't places where you can take your boat and fill it up. This, this is like, you know, you're not in uh, the East Coast of the United States. So diesel fuel usage isn't just a matter of price. It's a matter of getting it to the boat, and it's a matter of whether or not it's clean. So, uh-oh, hearts are flowing. I'm uh, concerned. <laughs> I'm concerned. 163. We have to talk about Thai wives today. But uh, Kapi Cho, hello. Uh, always leaves us comments. Do you program your own Victron? I don't love the interface. And Rob is saying, I have Victron. Sounds like I'm not going to see God. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then right above that, each battery monitored separately. So to alert if uh, one or two fail, which could cause a system voltage to drop. Yes. What what I have is I have the BMS one twenty BMS one two three system. It monitors every single cell, its temperature and its voltage, and tells you the min max. And it has a balancing little board on it, so that if one battery gets a little bit low. It takes voltage from the other batteries and charges it back up. If any one of those BMSs sees anything from temperature to a variance of the voltage that has been set, the whole battery bank shuts down and goes to sleep. That's, that's the emergency function, which is another reason why I have the second bank. So we have built this vessel for off-grid living uh, and off-grid lifestyle so that we can then teach other people what to do with their cabins, their homes, Right now, you can put a container home in the middle of the woods, and you don't require power anymore. It has gotten to where you can rely on that. 
Yeah, you can be where there's snow, and then guess what? You've got to come up with an alternate. So uh, every battery is monitored. Every battery does have alarm on it. But you can go from SOC state of charge, it's called, of maximum 98% down to SOC state of charge at 50% in a matter of an hour. And we leave the boat a lot. We take this dinghy and we're gone sometimes for eight hours. Yes. Most times eight hours. <laughs> we leave in the morning, we turn the anchor light on, say, oh, we don't need it, we're gonna be back. And we get back at 10 at night. Yeah. We yeah. are vagabonds when it comes to a place of anchorage. So I used to worry about the boat with lithium and now we put these redundancies. Um, I do program the Victron myself. It's a little quirky. I did get a little laptop just for Victron, but uh, I yes, I do do the programming because I'm testing things that I can then go out and tell people this works, this doesn't work. And we're not being paid by Victron. We're not being paid by the dinghy motor. We, we are doing this. Nope. Um, Nobody paid us, unfortunately. No, we <laughs> we'll go on later on why we're doing all of this, but we're 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 we've updated a, a catamaran for off grid living. And we have off-grid uh, home designs. Is your BMS, BMS Victron or another brand? BMS is called BMS123. Google it. It's because each little circuit board goes directly on the terminal of the battery. So you're not running all these wires. They go on the battery post, and it measures the battery post temperature rather than some little temperature probe on the side. So BMS is by BMS123. And I can open up my phone and I can check, or my iPad, and I can check every single voltage at a glance, even remote. But uh, we're, we're not remoted. We're, we're, you know, we're off gridders. Question to you uh, asked. Um... Oh, hello, 166 people. 166 uh, people with 172 likes, which means we will talk about the Thai wives. <laughs> Speaking of wives, William is 30 years older than you. My husband is 20 years older than me. Do you ever still feel like you're raising a child? I feel like I'm raising a child. <laughs> <laughs> my, my brothers, sisters, family members, uh, that actually was a true comment. Uh, my dad's now, our dad's 91 years old, and he still has to like put a chain on him to keep him from going and doing things. Uh, I'm an adventure seeker. I've traveled the globe for my livelihood and that's just what i am and so yes uh i think yana does feel like she's raising a child i think but, there was a question other way around yeah so in all seriousness uh no you know when we first started boating together because i'm an engineer with a lot of experience and i'm also a stubborn freaking goat so i'm constantly goat. well look at here <laughs> I'm constantly was telling Yana, don't do that, don't do that, don't do this. And and I was acting probably sounding more like, you know, four of her fathers. I um, do. <laughs> and so I said, you know what, I'm going to stop giving advice. This isn't nice for either one of us. Uh, you know, you're scaring the shit out of me. You're hanging over the side. This time we lost the bumper. Next time it's going to be you. And so that kind of advice. That kind of advice. <laughs> and one time we had an argument and she says, don't you tell me what to do. I said, listen, here's the deal. I said, if it's a dangerous situation and I'm the captain and I don't have time to explain, then I'm going to tell you what to do and you're going to listen. And later on, I'll tell you what and why this isn't hurting your feelings. It's keeping you from getting chopped up by a rudder. Yeah, well, the problem, though, was that I said, well, it's not like we are on the boat so I can listen to you. And then we are not on the boat. We are in the apartment and I don't have to listen to you yeah. because we are always living on a boat. So. Does that mean I always have to listen to you? Like, hello? And, <laughs> and you think I'm stubborn? Th this is the queen of stubborn. Um, so for one week, I said no more advice. I was talking about everything, the birds, and zero advice. And yeah, I said, it's kind of, I said, something is wrong. I said, are you okay? I'm like, I'm kind of missing the advice. <laughs> Well, I got so used to it. I think she broke a few things. I think she lost an earbud. I don't know what else. Oh, the anchor got smashed. That, so she says, you know what? I, I think I'd rather have the advice, but just throttle a little bit. So yeah, to answer the question, I've had to take a back seat in trying to teach. Uh, you know, our relationship isn't not, you know, old, old man, father, teacher, and young daughter, oh, listen to me and, and, and bow, you uh -huh. know. So I have, and, and my own daughters don't listen to me. Why so should I? Why, should, <laughs> why, why should my wife? <laughs> and, you know, Yana has brought a refreshing uh, 
part of my life to say I didn't listen to my father when I probably should have. Now I'm I'm mad because a lot of times he was right, but none of us like to be preached to. Um, and so, yes, our relationship has balanced itself to where I, I feel that, you know, we danger. If now, if the boat anchor is dragging and the wind is howling and the hail's hitting us and I say, get the life jackets, they're there. And, I think part of this also is that Yana had to learn that a lot of things that I said were true because she had listened to a lot of bullshit throughout her life. Right, <laughs> right. It was it was very hard for me to finally be around a very smart man that I didn't have to challenge and who was always right. I, that That's very new to me. So when he is right, I'm like, so now when he's saying something, I don't question that. Uh, it's 99.9 right but sometimes sometimes i still say no i don't think so yeah because <laughs> you have engineer and you have dentist so dentist at first was like by the book medical do, 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 do. well out here you don't have many medical options so by the way before i forget there is steven here from bahamas who guys oh. if you need the best driver in bahamas in nasa if you're in nasa you got to I'm going to put his I'm going to pin his phone number for you guys because he took care of us there and he was riding us around there and helping us so much. Yeah, he's he's not even just a, a you know, this guy has aspirations of construction. Um he took care of us like family. I mean, when we left, he's one of the guys we gave a big hug to because he he became uh, a part of us. So, if you're ever in Nassau, this guy will give you a tour. He toured us around the island. He was sweating his butt off because it was so hot. Yes, yeah, so big but, shout out to Stephen. And and I believe he just got married. But yes, you know, I think so too. Congratulations! I yes. hope that we had something to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> and he can also get you one of the best uh, caramel frappuccinos. That's his favorite, right? Mm, yeah, uh, caramel frappuccino, the the venti one. Oh, anyway, William is the, is the one with a good memory. <laughs> So everyone is saying enough about batteries. Let's talk about your lives. Well, the if they're saying that, then for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Peter asked, do you plan on attending any boat shows? Uh, you we know, tried. We actually, <laughs> we actually were trying to attend a boat show here in Thailand, and then we changed our mind and decided what? Stay at anchor. Stay at anchor. Yeah, we figured, you know what? We've got a boat. Yeah, why, why do we need a boat show? Yeah. Uh, and but yes the uh there are boat shows here there's one coming up in singapore i i got disenchanted with boat shows because i used to go to boat shows 20 15 years ago and you could look at the ones that i could dream about which means i looked at a boat that was 25 years old um not like a wife um and maybe it was under three hundred thousand dollars which is to, a fortune to me you know now you go to a boat show, and if you're not going there with uh, millions of dollars in your bank account, there's nothing to look at. The, the boat shows have turned into these yacht emporiums, the sailboat shows. There's no used boats. So I'm looking at used boats. I, I don't want a new boat. I want someone else's boat that worked out all the kinks. So I'm not knocking boat shows. You meet a lot of people, and you rub elbows with people. But there's a boat show in every marina. You just have to walk around, meet people, talk to them. You're going to get more advice in a marina hanging out with real boaters than you are going to be talking about new boat builders. So there's Trevor my Cho take. Is saying, need a boat con like the Comic Con Expo. <laughs> <For> <laughs> sure. Well, that is also in every marina, especially when you travel internationally. I mean, we were here and a boat came out of the water and we were getting our dinghy delivered and it said Miami Beach on it. Well, Mr. Nosy here, I had to go over and say, uh, are you guys from Miami Beach? Yes, we are. Well, we met a couple that left three years ago, traveled all the way around the Cape. Yeah. They're now awesome. here around Asia. So you're going to meet a lot of people around. Um, and yes, there are, I see a question, there are a lot of military, um, a lot of expats here that have moved here just like in Panama. So we should um, talk about as All right, now. so we'll we'll give a little. Yeah, we'll give you guys a little. So I see 199. Like, come on, I see you. You can put that one like that. Gonna it gets make it to 200. 200. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the 
Thai wife, Thai girl situation here, as we promised, because it's almost like over 50 minutes we're online. Oh, wow. So let's talk about this now. And quick announcement. Uh, you guys can write, everybody of you today, don't have to be logged in on YouTube. You can write all the things in uh, in the chat, and we see it here. We, I read, while William is yakking, I'm reading all of this. So if you're writing bad things here, I'm, I'm reading there that. <laughs> and I'm, and uh, <laughs> you go, you go, you go. And I see, and I will always say, I, I lost my very best friend, which was in the Navy. Uh, I have very good friends that are special ops people. I, I my father was in the military, in the Army Infantry. Um, I see several questions here. U.S. Navy, I see retired Chief Petty Officer, U.S. States Coast Guard. Yes, we have a ditch bag on this boat of items for survival. We have a ditch bag in the dinghy of items for survival. Um, you saw maybe one of our past episodes where the dinghy sunk on land, and we did not have it because the dinghy was a day old. Um, we have that in multiple formats. We were in a hurricane where we had to put all of our belongings in two backpacks each, and we crawled on the dock because the, the winds were so strong that the dock was breaking apart. And later on on land, we spent eight hours on land. We didn't take any food. And, you know, we took at that time our weapons and took things. Had we been blown off the dock, we had the backpacks on. We were not very smart. That was so stupid because the backpacks were weighed more so than we did. Heavy. So if we would get in the water with that backpack, we would just go down. We would be down with our because we didn't have life jackets. We didn't have life jackets. That we was were, so freaking dumb. So I, I can't believe that. So you know, in boating, you learn something by being slapped in the side of the head, and it's not what you can read about. It's not what you're going to read on YouTube or see it. It's that moment of danger that you say, "Okay, I made it, but I'm not going to be stupid the second time." So, uh, yeah, we, we are well geared and we are well prepared for what we've been in. But right, to our best knowledge. <laughs> we've been studying tsunamis. What do you do if there's a tsunami? Well, if, there, if you're early enough, you're supposed to go out to sea, which your, your mind is saying, bullshit, I'm running to land. Um, but there have been some very bad tsunamis here. And so uh, now instead of hurricanes, we're yeah, I have my. I had to load the apps. I have my alarms here of the earthquakes and stuff. It's a uh, yeah. It's a uh, different. It's pretty scary. Can, so can be. Salute everybody for your service, um, and more. Most importantly, uh, honorary salute to everyone um, that is on the channel. Police officers, paramedics, military. Um, our hat goes off to you, and. Uh, so no Thai wives. now we're going to go to a subject that was not, we could put, we could do a whole video on this. Yeah, and, but we're going to just cover this. Right. Yeah. And before I start it, there are several channels that you can watch. If you have an interest in moving to Thailand, um, there are some that are mediocre. There's one guy that's been here for 20 years. Uh, I have met uh, the, oh, the owners of maybe seven or eight com companies here, East Asia Marine, Octopus, uh, which is for solar panel, Wayne's World, which is a uh, used parts place. Uh, Mick, uh, I've met many people that have been here. They came here for a visitation or re early retirement. They married a, a Thai woman. They have Thai children because, well, mixture. But the, the reason is, is that in Thailand, you can only own 49% of anything. You cannot own 51%. So it's just like Saudi Arabia and Dubai. So if you marry a Thai woman, then you have the ability to buy a home, buy a property, have corporations make an income. So you can come here on a five and 10 year visa, but in order to own something, either you have to get a special work permit and get a special visa on top of that, replaces it. You have to open a company okay. also. And you have to open a company. Uh, taxes and everything are, are, are very strict and strong here. Um, you can marry a Thai woman woman and have a Thai wife and she can own 51% and you can own 49 and now you can open businesses, run corporations and, and the women here work, they work like crazy. They, they run the companies, they run most of the operations, they're doing the, the actual physical work. They didn't just get married and then say, okay, my job's done. I'm going to make babies. Right. Exactly. Um, so the government has structured its position of bringing people from around the globe here beyond 
intellect. Yeah, uh, very, very I, interesting I, and very specific. We've, yeah. we've studied it for multiple reasons, and this is how we're here. But uh, it is so well organized that they want to bring people that are financially able to take care of themselves, financially have to have their own insurance. And they come here, probably 80% of the people come here single and over age 50, 55. They can get here on a retirement visa for five years, and there is no age, um, how do you want to call it? That No one cares whether or not a guy is, uh, in the U.S., John and I would walk in and people look at me like I was weird, or, uh, hey, is this your daughter? Here, we walk in, we're, we're a, a normal couple. Uh, no one looks at the youth difference between husband and wife here at all. You can have... Most of the guys that are here have wives that are at least 25 years younger than they are. A lot of them have babies. So you've got a lot of 60-year-old guys running around with a bottle in a baby's mouth, maybe reliving their lifetime. Yeah, which is very interesting because, like, William is the only one with a Russian wife here. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. other thing. You know, I, I'm looked at as very strange because, like, they're like, uh, you have a wife that's not Thai. Yeah, um, yeah. So and 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 like you brought her from the U.S. Yeah, yeah. There are also a lot of Russians here, like a lot, because of this new policy of the ninety days visa, which I haven't seen so many Russians in since I've been to Russia. <laughs> yeah, I feel we go to some places. I feel I'm in Russia <laughs> because that's like a, one of the languages. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's very strange for William to be with a Russian wife instead of a Thai wife, for sure. Yeah, yes, for yes. sure. It's it's really strange. But the other thing that's very important is that uh, the, the ratio right now is 35 Thai bat to one. So if you're going to bring $1,000 here, you get 35,000 Thai bat. Uh, that's one huge adjustment. And then the other is you can go get a, uh, let's say, a, a 12, let's say a, a 12 inch long fish uh, grouper on a grill, two drinks uh vegetables uh and a coffee for what equal of, of nine dollars eight dollars so your cost of living you can be living in a very very nice place for rent for eight hundred dollars a month that in the u.s it would be costing you three thousand to four thousand your cost of living is we did a calculation i think it's maybe thirty percent so if you're on a retirement and you're getting Twelve or fifteen hundred dollars a month in retirement, that multiplied times thirty-five. So you can live here very well. You can eat very well, and actually, your Thai wife is going to be okay with that as income. <laughs> she, yeah, she's yeah. she's not going to say, "Why aren't you making five thousand dollars a week?" Well, so, she might say that. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> and and he's like, "Great, let's open a business, and you can do the you can work in the business, and now we can have actually income here." Because with so many expats and tourists, you can still do the business right. You're selling to expats on their money, but you're converting it into this livelihood. So, um, again, I won't go into all the details. You yeah. can Google Thai visa. Yeah, I just wanted also to add um, something. I think it's kind of important, and that what we've learned here also. There is a dream. There is like a dream that is called sailing. And, you know, sometimes having a dream is actually more exciting than living the dream. And by, by no means, it's not always true, but it can be true for some people, right? Because sailing is not just, oh, like beautiful oceans and waves and YouTube. And we just sit here with a glass of wine <laughs> drinking. It. It, it's not like that. It's amazing, but it's not as you dream about it. And so is the same as the Thai wife or Thai girlfriend, like, oh, I'm going to go Thai in Thailand, retire, have this amazing young Thai girlfriend, and I'm going to live forever, ever after. It's also just a dream of that way. It's not like that, too. It can be very good. It can be amazing. It can be better what you have. But it's, again, don't fool yourself for dream versus reality. You still have, you still going to bring yourself here. And wherever you are in the U.S., you're going to be here as well. Or Russia. Or Russia. Well, or, right. That yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter. Right. So there is no like a pill, right? A magic pill that you're going to like transport here. It's just there are a lot of pluses here, but there are also minuses that you will 
discover because it's like living on a boat there are pluses and minuses so um i think definitely if you think you would like that or you dreaming about that or you think it's cool you definitely should come here for a couple of months first before arranging anything and see if you like this country and maybe even come a couple of times and then figure out for yourself talk to the expats talk to the experiences don't read on facebook that's a bunch of bs and come here and talk to real people and see their experiences with their girlfriends with their wives with their businesses and then decide if that's for you the the other most important factor is that a lot of people sell everything and leave and come here and say this is it uh the, the probably the most important thing that i got out of talking with people is they said put your stuff in a warehouse it's so cheap we thought we we're going to ship a bunch of things here it just doesn't pay it doesn't make any sense you can get things here for so cheap uh, and then live for a little while and see what you think. Uh, but I can tell you that English language is predominant. You're going to find a lot of people that are older that you can be sitting down. And I mean, I go into these stores and they're like, you're not leaving. Pull up a chair. Let's sit down and visit for a while. So I, there's certain places I go. I have to program an hour to sit down and visit because there's a lot of very like people. But, you know. The, the common thread is the people that I meet here, they are all nomads. They wanted to travel. They wanted to live somewhere else. And they're looking at the good of it and not, oh, I wish I had my cheeseburger. And I wish I had pizza with cheese. And like that. You can have a cheeseburger here. And somebody wrote, you can even have a buffalo hamburger in McDonald's. I didn't know that. I'm not talking about cheeseburger. Ah, okay. <laughs> 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 I miss my I miss my my guns. I miss shooting oh, okay. uh, cans. <laughs> I, okay, I didn't want to okay. say I, I didn't want to say be, I, be direct. You know how I'm supposed to guess that. I didn't I didn't want to say I miss my breakdown. That's the size of a book, you know. So and that's not nervous breakdown. So, um, all right. There was one very important uh, thing that I saw here. First of all, again, thank you everybody. 183 people. Uh, make sure that you like and subscribe on the channel. We vacillate, believe me. There's sometimes we want to do this, do this, do this, and then we're out here living this life and say, oh, no, we have to do the video. We have to do recording. Our life is an absolute joke. We fall in the water. We break shit. We, you know, the, the dinghy. Well, I, I, I just have to, like, this guy is just keep. This is like the second comment, George. Comment number one. So, guys, we love you all so much. We read all your comments always. And like what, 99.9, .9, all of you are so positive and so amazing. But sometimes there are people like George who is writing right here. Your wife, girlfriend is very basic looking. I would do better if I were you. She's not top notch model quality. Well, I guess you have to divorce me now. But the George just continues. The wife girlfriend is unable to maintain stability and she's very low attractive. She has no features. So this has got a George has got to be an ex boyfriend of yours. Oh my God, George. This, this it's is, not all about attraction. This you know, is a, this is an ex -boyfriend. there are so many other things. Even if I'm unattractive to your, how would say, to your, taste. to your taste, it doesn't mean that I'm unattractive to William or to, I don't know how many men. The world is so big. There are so many people. They are attracted to different ones for different reasons. It's not just that. So I've got an answer to that comment. This is just so crazy. Like people like George, like writing this comment. And I'm so curious to see a person like George face to face. And actually like, how do you look George? What are you? <laughs> because like, who's see, that person don't, don't, writing don't, such comments? Don't get my wife on this subject this she, is so crazy. she doesn't even look at the comments that are held for review because it, it she goes on to this like rant because and, because it amazes to me how people write comments to strangers they like do know do not know us and express such negativity online. because that's george that's okay george is george you know the thing i can say is when, when you get older and you have a young wife your your eyesight goes so when i look at yana i think that she's amazing but because maybe maybe i can't see <laughs> <laughs> I can't see her. <laughs> so, you know, I don't spend any time with trolls. I don't get bothered by people with their negative comments. Believe me, um, before martial arts, I would love to, like, take people outside and beat them up or get beat up. Right now, I just look at stupidity, and I think, you know what? I'm not living in their body. I don't know what they're going through. So, to me, you know, the world's full of everybody. And if it didn't have a couple jerks, 
then you wouldn't have bar fights. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, love everybody here. We got uh, so oh, many George, people. <laughs> George is AI. George lives with his mom. I'm telling you, George is one of your ex-boyfriends. I can guarantee you. They he, don't know how to type in, in uh, live chat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you did this. You allowed everybody to comment. So George has been here probably. Thank you, George, for being here since our very first video. You're the guy that I keep reading the comment. Uh, father and daughter have sailing lifetime together. You're the guy that I say, delete, delete. All right. Let's um, let's start wrapping it up because we... Yeah, guys, the, come on. The last questions in the live chat. George, if you have any questions, please write them down here too. <laughs> or send me a pair of glasses, George. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Put the like on the video. We're gonna wait for the last questions and hellos for uh, from any of you in the chat. And I'm gonna answer a question. We didn't freaking answer anything of That's this. What so I'm saying. We just rambled. No. Okay. <laughs> so, so um, ballasting on the boat. I am adding a pump that I can move the fuel from port to starboard tank because they do not sell catamarans with that due to CE and safety standards. But yes. You can run under sail one motor or the other. The generator runs up a one tank. So I am adding a pump so I can transfer fuel from port to starboard. Um, this boat at 28 foot wide, 50 foot long, it really doesn't matter what you add to it. It's People say, oh, you put too much weight on that boat. It's not going to sail. Bullshit. The boat was designed to have 15 people and all the gear. So we are not even half to the weight limit or the weight capacity of the vessel. And I'm very cognizant is why the batteries are in the front. Um, the dinghy, the dinghy weighs less than a 14 foot high field with a 50 horsepower motor. And we have a eight kilowatt hour, 180 amp hour battery that connects. So the dinghy is powering the, the, the big boat. But we went with aluminum dinghy because we busted every dinghy we had. And so we redesigned it. It was built here in Thailand. And uh, that is the best thing that we did because we can put that thing on shore and it sits there on the hard and we come back. So, you know, the, the questions, the visa, the spare parts, I do have a full set of spare parts on board. Uh, we did get this boat from someone that had a company that was not doing charters, but he had a dive company and he had a hotel booking company. So when he left the boat, uh, everything was on the boat. So we have spares, we have parts. I've, I've added some naturally for uh, off-grid living because it's a different type of spare than when you have a captain. Um, another thing you'll learn when you travel, everyone is like, where's your captain? You know, who's who's moving the boat? And I'm like, well, my wife and I. And they're like, well, you, by yourself? Um, a lot of people here because of the cost have captain and crew. Uh, it's it's less for a whole month salary for a captain than you're going to pay somebody for four days in the States. Um, but we love being on the boat together. So um, there was a question about the dinghy. Then, uh, any regrets with the dinghy? Dinghy seems tipsy. Do you have any comments on hard shell dinghies? Right. The, the dinghy only seems tipsy because when you're boarding a inflatable, the tube and its diameter is kind of like a rubber inner tube on the water. It doesn't rock as much. But this dinghy has a complete air chamber between the bottom deck and the bottom of the dinghy, two air chambers on each side. It is impossible to tip over because the center of gravity is below the water. So it seems tipsy because it's going to move from side to side because it doesn't have the rubber bumpers. But now when you're on the rocks, or you're on the sand, or you're scraping the bottom of coral, which we have done many times, we would have tore the bottom of our dinghy up, even aluminum. Um, the, the, the bumpers would have been torn. So the dinghy, I don't have any regrets. Uh, electric is amazing. And, and the reason I say that is that we drop the dinghy down, we go. We don't say, okay, does the carburetor need bleeding? Do we have gas? Did we get gas? Is the gas clean? We don't have one drop of gasoline on, on board the vessel. So the, the dinghy, two years ago we did electric. I wasn't happy. Um, and we are now to a, play, a but, point. But you also was hoping to play it, I remember. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still, I miss my speed. I miss my motorcycles and things. Uh, the dinghy will not plane. 
Uh, it wasn't designed to plane. We could add a double motor and have two motors, but it comes to a point of Yana doesn't like going fast on a dinghy. She's no, me. I, I actually don't at all. She she is a screaming monster as soon as we hit on plane until we get off plane. Yeah, it scares me. I, I don't like speed. That's why I like sailboats and uh, slow men. Slow men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you're, you're nothing but slow, that's for sure. So, uh, no, the dinghy, I, I hands down. And if you look at, uh, what is it, Clark and Emily channel? Yes. Cl yeah. Clark and Emily have a couple of videos also about aluminum dinghies and aluminum tenders. And when you're out here and your dinghy is your only transportation, you don't have a place to patch the tube when you whip a seven-inch hole into it. We and Stuart even for almost four months were driving the dinghy to the dock with only one tube with air leaning on the other side because we didn't want to get a third dinghy. So uh, bottom line, the dinghy being of aluminum, if you're off grid, that's why the expedition vessels are made out of aluminum. Your weight versus displacement versus stability versus durability, you can't beat aluminum. You just can't. Yeah, we just can't go to all this kind of cool places and I don't have to be screamed on, or by William. We can't go there. There are shells. We can't go there. There are rocks. We can't go there. And you know how, how much you miss because of your dinghy, of your inflatable dinghy, because you just cannot go and freaking dinghy is what, $15,000? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so you really can't go there because you're gonna damage your dinghy, and then you are screwed. Then you're, uh, yeah. then you have your rowboat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but but we did acquire something. Yeah, cool. I I was at Wayne's World here, which has every part known to man that is salvaged off of boats. If you're in Thailand, you have to go see Wayne's World in Phuket. In in, in Phuket, and I walked in to look for a piece of stainless steel. And here sits one of these little, uh, I guess, seven, eight foot long uh, whaley, the the extruded plastic. If you look up whaley dinghies, they're also amazing. They're all over here. Um, and we'll get into why. But uh, so I told Yana that I had gotten her a, a birthday present early. And she's like, what is it? What is it? And uh, so the guys delivered it here. So she has her own little uh, whaley. whaley. But Google Whaley boats, they're extruded plastic. I always wanted one, but William was always like, it, it's too heavy. It's too heavy. Like, we can't have it. It's, it how many pounds was it? Like, the, the big whale is crazy, crazy yeah, weight. Yeah. But this one is so small and uh, going to be our little. That's her That's her get get off the boat away from William vessel. No, he, a lot of times when we are at anchor, William doesn't want to go ashore. And I want to go ashore. I'm like, I want to go to go, like, run or exercise or something. And... I'm going to go in my own boat now. <laughs> so now she has a little one she can drag up on shore. Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, there's a risk damage to the cat. But the way that we have this set up, uh, you never leave the dinghy on the back of your boat. Someone can come along, cut the line, your dinghy yeah. is gone. It, it isn't because you're losing it for theft, but that's your only way ashore. Uh, we always put the dinghy up on the davit system. And the way that we do it is we come to the davit system, we hook on the two, two, two lines to it, it can't hit the boat anymore. It has hit the back of the sugar scoops a few times. Um, but, you know, the, the catamaran is not, uh, <laughs> it's it's not a little light piece of fiberglass boat. It, it's made to hit things. Um, so we are putting a rubber bumper rail all the way around it um, now that we're back in the marina for a little while. So, uh, but every boat has its plus and minuses get a perfect boat you're not gonna get a perfect dinghy i'm not gonna get a perfect you can't get a perfect <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. so uh you know it it comes down to what you're going to use the boat for so i tell people that want to buy a boat i said charter a boat rent a boat spend some time on a boat because what you think you want by watching these videos may not be what you want yeah and and yeah so you know come to phuket we can hook you up with the most amazing charters and captains. They can give you a one-on-one -on -one experience and you can make a decision then from knowledge rather than, oh, I watch YouTube, so this is the best one out there. So um, anyway, we have said hello. <laughs> <laughs> Yana got to talk to George. Yes, I, I got to talk to George. And, uh, I removed George from the channel. 
that the, we will never see George no, Cummins again. No, <laughs> I'm with sorry. George. Sorry, sorry George. guys. Um, the the Whaley right now was pre-owned. Uh, a guy bought it for his two grandkids, and they were paddling it around the little pond behind his house. Um, Friends of Williams here. Yeah, I see that. Um, and so it is the, I think it's seven point six foot long. It's the little the little tiny one. It's their smallest one. It's the right? smallest one. Yeah. Uh, we have an electric uh, e propulsion three horse motor. So right. we uh, she'll have the, the whaley and the motor so she can drag it on the beach herself. If the tide goes out, she can drag it back into the water. We learned the hard way on our aluminum dinghy. When the tide went out, we got to the dinghy. It was, uh, I think, five in the afternoon. Yeah, that's coming in the next video. And uh, the tide was about a football field away, the water. Dinghy was high and dry. So we thought, shit, we can't get to the boat. We can't swim. Uh, we looked and said, well, okay, high tide at 11. We had to sit there in the chairs on the beach and wait for the tide to come yeah, up. Yeah, that's going to be next episode. So we learned the hard way is that when you're in tide where it goes almost five foot here, uh, you better plan your excursion around the water. Because... Which I hate. <laughs> I do not like playing around the tide. I'm like, what if I'm having fun now? Why should I leave this the oh, shore? You know He's what? right. The video what? isn't focused. No, uh oh. No. It, it's on the, we are live streaming from William's dirty laptop. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now much better. Yeah, wow. I think someone put their finger there when we started, remember? Oh, maybe. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Uh, well, that way we look better. <laughs> we did look better. Now now you. Thank you. you Thank you. After one hour, someone saying you're a little bit, you're a little blurry. Um, hello from Vancouver. Hello from uh, Texas. Hello from Houston. Hello to Wisconsin. Hello to Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Hello to Antarctica. No, sorry. Australia. <laughs> Um, wonderful to have you people from all over the place. Oh, you know, Rob said your video quality has significantly reduced. It's, you know, guys, because our Starlink died uh, and we are here on Marina Internet. That's our, the only way for us right now. Our, our Starlink got damaged when we brought it here as luggage and I put tape over it and the guys came to uh, wash the top of the boat and they washed the whole Starlink antenna. When I picked it up, it sounded like rain inside. So uh, hats off to Starlink. They said, oh, just we're sending you another one. It's exchangeable under warranty. I'm like, well, it got damaged and it's full of water. It's okay. It's covered. So yeah, the problem is that they're not sending it to Thailand. They're sending it to where we ordered it from, which is Miami. So now somebody has to bring it. So Four times, where's your next destination? Uh, we are going to announce some news at probably the next live. Yeah. Um, because... That's the reason why we're here in a catamaran, and it's the reason why we're in Thailand. We're going to announce some things, a little cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. But we will be sailing between here and Malaysia and around this area for at least the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, and um, we'll just wait with that. You're going to sail with your horrible basic wife. <laughs> <laughs> my my non-model, non-Thai? Yes, yeah, non-Thai. Okay, guys, uh, I see people are losing us. Um, okay, last question. Which boat do you like the best, old monohull or the catamaran? Last question. Last question. Catamaran. Catamaran, hands catamaran. down. Catamaran. I'm surprised to say that. Catamaran. But, yes, uh, got better. Yeah, the, the catamaran for quality of living, for safety, for different waves and different sea conditions, uh, and... The new designs with the breakaway keels, the double thick bulkheads in the front, the mast that has the uh, actual rigging that holds this into an A-frame design, which is adds to the stability. Um, the Fontaine Peugeot bulkheads in its manufacturing process, 5,000 boats, they know what they're doing. Alex knows what he's talking about. What is that? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Follow the advice of Alex <laughs> yeah. and get your plane tickets ready or actually save your money for plane tickets. Um, and also, I wanted to say that aside this question, it's one thing to be comparing new steel boat and new fiberglass boat, let's say catamaran. But it's another thing to be comparing 1985 steel boat and 2017 fiberglass catamaran. You really cannot compare this fair 
to both boats because the other boat was so much rigged by other people that didn't know what they were doing. Uh, a lot of workers, a lot of random workers were working on it in different countries that that didn't do a good job. And William redid a lot of things, but there was still a lot of things that had to be fixed there. And the main problem there was that a lot of parts could not be found. We had to have so many spare parts on board always. And we never knew what's going to break next and if we're going to be stuck somewhere for a year. Yes, yes. The other thing is that Yana very easily now can raise the sails and take the sails back in. She can drive this boat. She can handle it, maneuver it. This type of a boat with two twin engines it's like driving a skid steer, but maybe many people haven't done that. But um, this boat can be handled not only by Yana, by by any captain. Even the most experienced captains could not get on our other boat and handle it because you've got 60 tons, single screw, no bow thruster. So to answer that question, it's not just about boating. In the case of an emergency, Yana can get this boat into a marina and someone can throw her the line. That other boat, she would get into the marina and probably damage all of it so uh it's it's about the complete package yeah. yeah and you know i hear people a lot of men say well women love catamarans because they have this beautiful kitchen this beautiful galley it's correct but i love catamarans because i can open and go into the engine room i'm getting older uh you know when i'm crawling around in a steel boat sideways and twisted it takes five days for me to find out where the bruises are I can go down here with a cup of coffee, open the hatch, and sit there and work on the engine without being a contortionist um, and and not worrying about getting back out. So, you know, there are different types of boats, and you just have to know what you're going to do with it. So if, I guess I took, what, 15 boats to learn that I was always, I guess, not liking catamarans. Always kind of shooting them down. So did I. You know, they're not real boats. They're a, well. I'm eating my words, uh, and I'm saying that you know this this is a this is an amazing boat. Uh, what can I say about it? Um, all right. Oh, and um, thank you for answering my question. There is no comparison. More to the only negative I know. Actually, in Thailand, it's it's the same price, right here to dock the catamaran. Yeah, you you you'll it's fall over. I'll go in and say, uh, you know what, uh, I. You know, how much is it to dock the boat? We have a catamaran. Uh, it's by the foot. Yeah, but we have a catamaran. Oh, it's by the foot. So there are so many catamarans here that it has become a norm that if they don't have slips and if they charged more, then you wouldn't have. This is one of the largest charter boat locations in the world. And people come here because yeah. you've got 97 dive sites, 175, maybe 200 islands all within an area that you can sail within a day. So, uh, you know, that that getting bent over with a catamaran works well in the U.S., doesn't work well here. All right. Thank you guys so much. Last hellos in the chat. I see Mike has also a wife 29 years younger than him, have been together 14 years, treat her like an adult. Good job. <laughs> And you get all relationship with give and take. We learn from each other. Exactly, Mike. It's all, it's not about the age. People like to make it about the age, but it's really not. It's a, either you fit each other or you don't. Old soul, young soul. <laughs> I so have an older much, soul than, than he does. That's so we're what, pretty much. I can guarantee you. You know, we, uh, the, the problem is that Yana's mind is that we can go anywhere we can do anything and then worry about it later. Um, we went climbing a mountain on an expert climbing trail with ropes to be able to go up. It was such an incline. And we get three quarters of the way up where everybody else stops. And we were supposed to go left and then go around the side of the cliff. Well, we went straight because Yana's like, oh, I'm sure it's straight. But yeah, I'm really like, uh, it's supposed to be a hike up. Why so the road goes left? Something is wrong. <laughs> we're on the side. And I kid you not, we're at a side where you had to hold on to the trees not to slide down. And we hit a rock bluff. And I was worried about getting back down. It, it, it was challenging, to say the least. So the difference between youth and non-youth, I sit back and study and research. And already Yana's gone. Okay, I had to go up there and, and get alongside. 
So, but a young wife or a wife your age, if she's the right wife, she's going to keep you young. She's going to help you out. She can help you out. <laughs> I'm talking about anchoring. I'm not talking about getting out of bed. <laughs> okay, All right. guys. Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Put a like on the video if you can, if you didn't yet. Send this channel to friends and family because that's how we keep going as we keep looking at these stats and say, really, if we put Yana's back up there, we get 2 million views. If we put the two of us up there, we get 6,000 views. Yeah. So the quality is the same whether the back's there or not. But, you know, Yana's... So come on, guys. Click on the Williams face too. <laughs> yes. I, I think the back model is soon going to retire. Yeah, because getting, my back is getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> People see her here and clothing up to here, and they're like, "Is that the same person that's on?" No, that's a back model. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you much for everyone, um, and stay safe. Uh, live the dream. Don't dream the dream, because uh, you never know what day you're not going to be able to jump on a boat. Steve, I'm into power, not sail, but I think you two are what makes life worth living. Stay happy and keep enjoying every day. That's a very nice comment. Thank you okay. so much, Steve. Right. Thank you much, everyone. I need a bikini. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, we were thinking about that, like a red one, a red <laughs> bikini for William. <laughs> hey, I, we're we have a lot of Europeans and a lot of Russians and a lot of non-Americans here, and their bathing suits look like a bikini. I just have to the point where I could walk around like that. No, I'll keep my boxers. Oh, we're working on him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we love you so much. If you want, uh, you can watch this video from the beginning. Well, yeah, that that is obviously and, true. You know, well, a lot of people don't know. I'm sorry. I feel like we haven't covered even half what we were like planning to cover. So maybe we'll do another live soon, right? Do you guys do you guys want another live or are you kind of tired of us? Let us yeah, you let us know about the your outfit switched. <laughs> well, Yana has found that she likes men's underwear. Um, here in Thailand. She can buy them at any 7 Eleven. Yeah, they like shorts. I like them a lot. So you she you see her running around a lot on the boat, and, and those are that's her sexy attire. <laughs> <laughs> her adars. Yes, is that what yes, it is? Yes, yes. Yeah, and I'm not allowed to touch the Adars. Well, they don't fit me anyway. But So attire has changed. Uh, yeah, so if you want lives, more lives, send us our comments. Uh, if you have questions specific, go on to Patreon. We literally have not answered any comment that I screenshotted. From you didn't? The... <laughs> we, we have to well, make okay. another Well, okay, answer them in a hurry. And if in people a hurry. Yeah, if the people want to leave, they can leave. But we understand that. We've been ranting for an hour and 27 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. So we're not. So if you're still day. here <laughs> and you gave <laughs> us a question, <laughs> you know, get another beer. What was the most important change that you made for oh, the on the boat? Yes. Okay. The most important change, and it's going to surprise everybody, is I increased the size of the anchor from a rock to 40, a rock of 40 to a 55. And I increased the chain size from a 10 millimeter to a 12 millimeter. And the reason why I say that's the most important, all of this neat stuff and the air conditions and everything else is not worth you wiping your butt. I mean, if you can't safely anchor, you're not safe. Uh, if the motor dies or if a storm comes in, your friend is the anchor. You drop it and it's got a hook and it's got to stay. So the most important upgrade that you can do on your boat without a big expense, you can buy a used one, is to go to a heavier chain. I have 100 meters of chain, and even if we're only in 10 foot of water, I put out at least 60 meters of chain. And then the anchor, we first drop the anchor, we hook it hard so the boat can't move in reverse. And then I let the balance of the chain out, and then we hook the bridle, and then we hook the, we turn on the anchor alarm. So the anchor is your best friend. It stops you and it lets you think what you're supposed to do. Uh, Nadi Khan, going from 10 to 12 millimeter, did you have to change the gypsy? I didn't change the gypsy, I had to change, well wait, some people call gypsy the whole windlass. The windlass is a stay, the same, it's a quick windlass. I unscrewed the top, I pull off the 10 millimeter uh, gypsy and put on the 12 millimeter gypsy. And I still maintained the 10 meter, 10 millimeter gypsy and I kept half of the 10 millimeter chain. 
just in case we get to a place where I can't get the anchor up, it's caught on something, which happens a lot, I'll have to cut the chain and let it lie down there until I can come back, and then I can still use the other one. Uh, just don't hammer your windlass hard, and it can handle a larger anchor. It's not picking the anchor up until you're right over the top of it. Right, exactly. And, and that's what I had to learn because a lot of, like, on the Dawn Hunter first and then that that anchor that we changed there first was super heavy and yeah i had to be very careful with uh, not to rip it yeah this is the expert now she she is like handling the anchor up there in the windlass and yeah, expert that broke the winch <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was horrible I, I don't know if you guys saw that episode uh i i was uh, pulling it up and i pulled the anchor too much yeah so inside that now i have a i've attached a little shackle on the chain so when it goes over the rubber roller i know where to stop she knows to put the brakes on and stop you know but anyway erica erica always uh comments and she's a loyal subscriber all a loyal subscriber what does that even mean all that power why not electric propulsion <laughs> erica you uh this morning i was like we have still have a problem with our sail drive it's like the second time out of the water the sail drive jumps out of gear. We don't know really what it is. And I was sitting down there thinking, you know what? I could put an electric sail drive on that one side of the boat and we can still run diesel on one half, electric on the other half, and then be running electric for a very big part of the time. And we have a generator. So yes, to answer your question, uh, on all the research, the dinghy is a test and the dinghy is working well. But the dinghy is working well because it's our backup. It's not our primary. And when you have wind and current, if you've got seven knots of current in some places between the islands here, and you have 30 knots of wind, the electric range that you anticipate is going to go down to, you know, minutes as opposed to hours. So um, right now, the, the new hybrids, as I see come up, are, are also amazing. Um, if I was designing a new catamaran, I would be designing an aluminum. I would go with the Garcia, which is an aluminum expedition catamaran. It's amazing. Uh, I would also, I think, I think Pucky or whatever his name is, that's what he's doing. I would go with hybrid. And what it means is that I would rely on diesel partially, but have electric as a backup. But you better be an electrical engineer, or you better know how to use a fluke meter if you have an electrical system, because one fuse can go out and you're done. On a diesel engine, you can drag a gas can downstairs, put the hose in the side of it, prime it and pump it and be running. So electric has its advantages, but it's also still in its techni technical stage. Um, Is it a hint to what you may be doing next, William? No, 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 no. no. Well, you know what? The boat engineer retired when I had to change the turbo and the exhaust, and I was in the engine room for seven days straight. I came out and I said to Yana, I retired. I, I'm not, I didn't stop being an engineer around the globe getting paid to be a free engineer <laughs> just to yeah, fix our home. Yeah, he said he's like, mechanic is done. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to play with things. Um, robotics is my passion, my hobby. Uh, the dinghy is my passion now and hobby to, to look at maybe getting these things to market. But I'm, I'm not going to be modifying this boat. Uh, this boat is our home, and it's working well. If it's fit, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So I don't know. Like this guy also have a screenshot of this guy. It's very yeah. strange. So uh, this guy is from Alex. Uh, Thank you, Fetal. I feel in love. I felt I feel in love watching your adventure in front of you guys. Thank you so much. Nice emojis. Yes, <laughs> hard. Uh, one of the questions, uh, is your boat metal? Uh, you were all jazzed about a steel boat and the monohel, right? Did you go to aluminum three cat? I really don't know. I don't remember fiberglass or metal. So a lot of our people that give comments are translating Google. And, and I appreciate that because I can generally put that together. And, um, and are you okay with the splishy, splish, splashy against the fiberglass? Um, <laughs> so to answer that question, the metal boat that we had, uh, built in, nine, in built, uh, 1985. 1985, steel hull. Uh, our cabin was on in the aft 
Uh, and so the splishy splash at anchor was all hitting the bows. So we didn't hear much, but we did hear the waves hitting the backside of the boat. This catamaran, our master cabin is in, again, the aft. We have two cabins in the, uh, the front of the boat. And then in front of those cabins, there's a crew cabin. And then there's a sail cabin for sails and storage and so forth. The way this boat's designed is that you can crash the whole front of the boat and it'll fill those two front cabins, but they're bulkhead cabins. So the water doesn't come into the boat. So you don't hear the waves hitting this boat. Um, the other thing is that although it's 28 foot wide, each pontoon at the front is only about a foot wide. So it's slicing the waves when we're at anchor. On the back, we have the sugar scoops and the complete engine room between the firewall of our bed and the back of the boat. So any waves hitting the back of the boat are not heard. So surprisingly, I hear the water less on this boat than I did on the metal boat. Um, the metal boat, you can hear fish eating on it all the time. Click, 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 click. I thought that it was rusting away underneath us. Um, you don't have the same here either because the, 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 the bulkheads and the bottom of the boat is super, super thick. I think when I drilled through it, we had fiberglass of this thickness when I had to drill through to put a through hull on it. So it's amazing the, the size and it's not, it's not wafer. It, it doesn't have foam in the, in the middle. So anyway, I hope I answered that question. They, uh, again, Yana hit it on the head. You can't really compare this boat with a metal boat with an aluminum boat. Each one has advantages, disadvantages. Um, but uh, I, I, we are both very pleased uh, with the construction and with the safety. Dr. So. Cho was saying, for me, it was the smell of the fiberglass. I actually got used to it. <laughs> I kind of don't notice that anymore. I did when we just acquired the boat and we came here and I was like, wow, this is so bad because our 1985 was full teak, beautiful smell. You get in and you're like, ah, oh. like, well, I live in a boat. This is amazing. This is like different here. And sometimes if we're not on the boat for a little while and then we get in, you can definitely smell fiberglass. It's a very specific smell, like a sweet kind of, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, but we got used to it. I don't smell it anymore as much. And I think when the boat get, gets used and aired out, it's not that bad at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The uh, boats are meant to be used. If they're not used and they're all locked up. Um, the other thing that we hadn't realized is that we had all that teak and we were bats, like B-A-T in a cave. It was so dark inside and we got so used to the darkness. This boat, it's so light and it's so bright that it kind of gives you a different type of feeling. You're, you're seeing the water all the way around, which is what I demanded. I mean, I have to see water. I yeah, can't. when we were like thinking of switching the boat, uh, I wanted monohull. He wanted something that he's above the water. <laughs> there wasn't that important what it was, but he was like, I cannot be below the water. And that was kind of like the most important. So I had to compromise. But once I did, I'm actually quite satisfied. I mean, I, I don't really, I miss the wood, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, again, it's you, a trade. you can't yeah. have everything, yeah. you know, uh, what YouTube channel do you watch the most? We actually used to watch quite uh -uh. a bit, and now we don't at all. But, you know, I have to say this is thank you to the YouTube channels because I did learn, and I still learn quite a bit. There's a lot of knowledge out there. Um, Emily and Clark, Zingaro, uh, Zatara, Sailing Doodles, um, Atticus. I like GBU. GBU, uh, now building the cabin. You know, we would laugh at those two because we were kind of similar. Um but, you know, we, we still, I still watch the videos. Sometimes I do for a binge and I don't for a while. You know, now people have had children and I watch them being pregnant. And now the kid's riding on the scooter with Captain Rick. Yeah, that's like, scary. you know, it's yeah. scary. It makes me realize that you, you don't really, you don't realize what time is. Uh, Delos, absolutely. Delos uh, has a whole lot of wealth of information. Uh, Parley. What a bunch of party animals. And, you know, I he's, think he's living the life. He's living the him. dream. You know, uh, even Emerald Steel. We watch Emerald Steel. With I him, love Emerald Steel. Him yeah. playing the guitar yeah, and in singing. The beginning. This is so uh, cool. You know, aside from Yana, where can you find a wife that can weld, dive, do the main sheets, and cook 
on a no, stove. No, I can never be cool as she is. Like <laughs> she is like freaking she's fire. a wizard yeah, yeah she's a I, I can uh also we watched uh brick house uh through their whole issue and yeah. her leaving l losing her husband um yeah, that was you know sad. there is a community that happens we uh encountered a couple of youtubers as we travel we encountered some from india uh we've had people walk up to the boat and we don't have our name on this boat um and people recognize us and they come and talk there's a respect but, you know, the YouTube family, I respect anyone that's posting YouTube videos. It's not easy. It's a lot of editing, a lot of time, a lot of work, dedication. And, and you're not getting a return financially on it. You're, you're giving to the community. Yeah, you might get a boat or you might get this or that, but it's not simple. I mean, no, you don't. Nobody's just giving you a boat. No, no. Uh, you know, even even Atticus with all the things they went through, we we started watching YouTube, I guess, five years ago. Yeah, about that. Yeah, and then we did our channel, and we stopped for a year, year and a half. A lot of people that we see now, like GBU, you know, we hit 50,000 subscribers yesterday. I'm like, wow, we hit 50,000. It's like, remember when GBU hit 50,000? And I think they're like 200 and something. Um, Good for them. So, you know, we respect YouTubers anywhere, in any channel, anything, because it's not simple. And, and it has become a profession. It's kind of weird. Sometimes will, someone will say, oh, you're a YouTuber. It's like... Well, what about being an engineer yeah, or a yeah. dentist? Yeah, it's a profession, just not for us, and um, not not always be taking this seriously as most as you should if you want to do this more. Yeah, it's uh, like full time. It's why when we got here, we decided that uh, we're going to get involved in some other things along with YouTube and even share more, um, you know, with our community around the globe, uh, family and friends. So. Uh, uh, yes, we, we watch and binge. And then I find myself watching Off Grid Garage, a guy in Australia about lithiums. And then I'm watching Will Prowse. Uh, I'm watching about, uh, you know, the new flying vehicles. So YouTube has become my television because I can select what I want to watch. And you? Do you watch YouTube? No. <laughs> she, wa she watches how to make a better video. And then she's like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I really, okay, so we should actually wrap up. 300. 300 likes. Thank you guys so much. Great. Thank you, everybody. And, you know, health, happiness. Okay, uh, last, last question. How did you cope with the rainy season July, August? Well, we came here in <laughs> July, and I was expecting, I was reading that it's going to be like some, how you call when you know, oh, we annoy, annoy. Yeah, uh, Noah's Ark. Yeah, yeah Noah's Ark. I thought we, we need one. <laughs> and it actually didn't rain that much to, to, to an extent. It was raining sometimes a day and then nothing for two or three days. And then sometimes it would rain during the day and then stop for a little while. It wasn't that bad. Listen, I, I can't say. We, we left southern Florida. We have more rain and monsoons in southern Florida than their monsoon raising season. It, it isn't bad. It's kind of nice. It's refreshing. Everything's clean. Everything's washed off. And the rain doesn't rain for five and six days straight. It pours like hell, and then it clears up. So the rainy season actually is more enjoyable to me. And also very, my, like tw twice as less people <laughs> yeah. everywhere, Yeah, which is it, kind of nice. The prices are lower. Are lower. Um, yeah. And we... Phuket has a tourist section on one side of the island, and then it has non-tourist and marinas and boating on the other side. We are on the non-tourist boating, but we're on the side where all of the charters leave. So we are seeing hundreds of people come and get all their gear on the boat, and away they go for two weeks, and they come back again. They get all their gear off. Um, so we're experiencing a lot of the, the non-tourist part. And we, have, we had to move our boat because there were monkeys on the back of it. Um, and Yana is afraid that monkeys are going to be like pigs. Excuse me, you have your mess out there. They're going to steal all your tools <laughs> <laughs> and build a boat for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so we are in the jungle. I mean, right now I'm looking outside. We have mountains and, and, and homes on the side, and we have all green around us. Very nice. Um, so, uh, beautiful here. Beautiful. We like it a lot. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, the package is amazing. Sometimes William is complaining that he doesn't have his cheeseburger. But I can slap him back in. Cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. We love you. Thank you so much for joining. We can do another live. Soon.
<laughs> yeah, just let us know when. When the winds blow. Yes. Oh, yes. Super Bowl Sunday. Um, my two cents worth. Turn it off during halftime uh, entertainment and then turn it back on. All you guys who know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> guys, bye. Love you. Thank you, everybody. Put that like if you enjoyed. Bye-bye. And we'll stay online for the comments for a little bit, but we're going to go offline. They're going to finish the comments. Oh, then it goes away? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Tech. This is technical. <laughs> Ding.